perfect. Thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Journeys with Type 1 Radio Lounge. With your usual cast of crazy people such as Jay Lawson, P Sonic, Fine Check, Time Warrior, and all the rest. Not here on Gilligan's Island, but on Type 1 Radio on Blog Talk. Searching the known to the unknown, looking for wisdom, enlightenment, and freshly popped popcorn. So let's journey together as we welcome our current guest, today's guest on Type 1 Radio, Rebecca Jernigan, with Journeys with Rebecca at journeyswithrebecca.com. <laughs> Is it just me or did that double echo? Yeah, that, that was my concoction. It's my fault, blame me. I was listening to that. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much knew you'd be busting out laughing. Okay. That's good. what I was looking forward to yeah. at the beginning of the show. Rebecca laughing her ass off. <laughs> Well, it was, it was quite... Laugh. Yeah, I couldn't get you to laugh this car, hard Halloween 2010, remember? So I'm making up for it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was very, very delightful. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. So let's everybody welcome Rebecca Jernigan to this episode of Pipe One Radio as we wonder where P-Sonic, PyCheck, and all the rest are. I guess we'll chime in eventually. Jay Larson is here, too, I think. Unmute your mic. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, there you are. We didn't lose him. Cool. <laughs> Rebecca, please tell us about the epic awesomeness that is Journeys with Rebecca. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's been a, it's been it's been years. You know, it started out uh, uh, early 2000s. It developed from there um, in the days before Internet radio was really Internet radio. Um, I used to be. I what I used to do with my show for those that are not familiar with it was, uh, it started out as a pre-recorded show. All my shows were pre-recorded because I didn't do live broadcasting. And um, some of the radio stations that I was on, I was on numerous radio stations. Um, I've been on numerous radio stations, and I would have to send a, a CD. Uh, to the radio station that they would then uh, queue up and play in their time slot, you know, in whatever time slot. So, you know, I mean, I, I had my own specific time slot in those days with each individual radio show. So it was really quite a crack on it um, because I had to make uh, different intros and exits based on where the particular CD was going to be um, sent to and what radio station it was going to be played on. Now, again, uh, not all of them were uh, Internet radio stations, but most of them were Internet radio stations. And in those days, terrestrial radio stations used to pick up uh, these Internet radio stations, and they would also play it. So my show was also being aired on uh, small uh, terrestrial terrestrial radio radio stations. So similarly to Arnold, things like that. I'm sorry. Where, where, similarly to Art Bell and Bell things like that, to that, where, um, where um, you know, when it's no, syndicated it's nationally, it's just kind of pumped out in that way. It's not necessarily all airing at the same time. Right, exactly. And, you know, I was on other radio stations, simply all settled when I went into, uh, uh, into oh, I remember the name of the term of the yeah, different types of radio stations that went out. I'm not talking about fun run. I'm talking about a different type how it was actually heard. It was broadcast a lot of different places. So right out of the gate, you know, right out of the gate, I, I had my hands in, you know, a half a dozen of them and uh, 
you know, I have to say is when, when the information came to me, uh, it came to me that I was supposed to do a radio show. And for those that don't know, you know, my past or my history or anything, I started out in the late 90s um, as a professional reader. And uh, I'm a clairvoyant, a natural-born clairvoyant. Um, I uh, then was uh, began, became a co-host on a local television show with a gentleman that had done a, a television show for 13 years in the Kansas City area on uh, cable TV. And then um, the ratings were so good that I got my own show, and we did that for, uh, for several years. And then one of the big cable companies came in and bought out the uh, local cable company's uh, business. And, Rebecca, of course, then they took away all of... Sure. Um, are, there, are there any copies floating around from when, when you were on TV? I've always been curious to see those. I can't find it anywhere. I don't know if they exist. I have pictures of me. Uh, I have some old pictures. I can probably dig them out somewhere where when I was on TV that somebody, uh, one of my fans, used to take pictures of her TV set with me being <laughs> on the TV set that choked it seriously. Wow. Yeah. But what, and what so, about VHS copies? Like, did anybody ever make any? Was, like, well, was that you know, preserved? The, you know, we weren't allowed to take, we were not allowed to take any uh, anything out of the studio. It was all copyright protection. Of course, it was done on, uh, on on their format, not on a regular VHS or beta format. Um, so I have no idea if anyone's still got any copies of it. Uh, the several copies of the VHSs that I had have since deteriorated, and Ooh. I never did get them copied over to a DVD or anything. So all of and I only had a few of them on VHS. But yeah, they were they were actually quite fun. Um, uh, and, and actually, it was a live call in reading show. I have to tell you that in which cool. people would call in and get readings. Now, the most interesting thing was, is I, as I was doing my own show, I was still co-hosting the other show. And the one that I was co-hosting it with, that it was his show originally and brought me on, um, he had a lady that was coming into town and needed somebody to interview her. And so this is how I got started in interviewing. So when did the show kick off as Journeys with Rebecca officially? Hello, everyone. Am I able to be heard at this point? Yes. Okay, because there were some technical difficulties there for a moment. <laughs> Rebecca lost the call. Well, I'm here. Oh, uh -huh. I just saw you typing in the box there. Yeah, okay. I, it, yeah. There was a way big delay there with with what I was typing, and then what happened, and yes. And by the way, weird. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been happening a lot. And um, we just got hit with another CME yesterday, so yep. this is probably the after effects of all that. Yeah. Yeah, all this time dilation. Oh, it's it's. There's a lot of distortions. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. yep. But I mean, if the if the space time distortions aren't as interesting enough, you got to really feel for the people in India who have gotten a bit more than that. Their entire power grids is flatlined. There's like hundreds of millions of people without electricity, and this is summer. Um, there's a guy here who runs a, a storefront um, in Chicago, uh, True Discount Food and Cigarettes or whatever it's called. But um, he's from India, and he said it gets so hot in the summer that um, if you walk across the street in um, flip-flop sandals, you'll leave, like, rubber marks across the street. It's, it's like it's, it's really nasty hot during the summer. So this is the sort of condition. Well, I don't doubt that at all. Yeah, there's, what, 280 million people or something that is. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, imagine facing that without electricity. Ooh. No. I might have to move. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no thank you on that one. That's just, yeah. Yeah, bless the heart. And that's, that's the talent right there for sure. Hello, Sonic. Yeah, one, 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 thing, one thing I've noticed is that 
when all the participants oh. kind of concentrate and let go towards the intention of stabilizing the signal and just relax into the flow, um, the signal does have a tendency to obey. Um, me and Jay have done this multiple times. So if we could all just kind of focus our intention on a stable signal, it should offset the CMEs. Hello, Sonic. Uh, hello. I've just got in from uh, um, Steve and Patrick, so uh, um, I'm I'll be here in the background, so just uh, just carry on with the show. Okay. All right. Hello, Sean Rebecca. Connery has arrived. Hello. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic, a.k.a. Sean it's Connery. Not stirred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently not me. Okay, so uh, I'm here in the background. All right. Nice to meet you. So I'm not sure where we like even left off at uh, in any of regards in any of this. So, you know, if you have well, another question. Well, I know it started, up, yeah, it started breaking up for me when I asked when did uh, Journeys with Rebecca officially become what it is when you move from co-host to, to host, and that's when things started getting all timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the the radio show, like I said, was started out as, you know, as a recordings that I would send to the stations and, uh, you know, that was in the days before the flash drives even, you know, and everything was still done on CDs and um, I don't even think DVD ROM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just really crazy stuff when you think about it. So, you yep. know, I mean, it just it just kind of snowballed from there and the information was is that um, this was to be uh, people of non mainstream to come and share uh, pieces of information because I do believe we're all carriers of information and it's just about all of us getting together and, um, and, and, and being allowed to share our pieces of information and okay. connecting dots and growing and making ourselves more aware. I mean, it just makes you more well-rounded, more, uh, more educated, and I don't mean that in an academic sense. Uh, it makes you more knowledgeable. It makes you more wise. Uh, it also keeps that, yes, and it keeps you a connection with those like-minded individuals and, you know, by sharing all of this, and, and and I can tell you, I've had a wide gamut, I mean, as you well know, a wide gamut of uh, of people on my show from, uh, you know, whistleblowers to uh, uh, people that talk about ancient knowledge and speak. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Your show is awesome. I love that about it. I can't speak. Uh, we're getting distortion. It goes for pigeonholed. It was never meant to be pigeonholed um, into just paranormal or metaphysics or whistleblowing or any of that. It was meant to be uh, a hodgepodge of everything because I believe yeah. the truth lies in all arenas, not just not just in metaphysics and not just in paranormal and not just in um, uh, you know. Uh, regular everyday uh, knowledge I mean it comes from everywhere and um, we all have to be in, in my opinion we should all be able to be able to tap into the different arenas and and not get caught up with the labels on whether it comes from this you know this genre or that genre or this genre it's based the information on what the information is and how it's presented not by Absolutely. what you know not by what direction it, it, it or field it may come from because you know, I've, I've had more engineers on my show than I think anyone has, <laughs> from from mechanical engineers to uh, biological engineers. I mean, chemical engineers. It's been an amazing ride. It it, it really has. Um, I really I love the diversity about your show. I I originally found out about your show from Jalela Starr. I was watching her YouTube program, and um, there was the one called Teachers Team Up. And um, there, there was, was you and Jalela sitting in her little office there and, you know, talking about things and about journeys with Rebecca. And, you know, for a while, it's like that was a time in my life where I was thinking, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time to check it out. It sounds cool. I don't have time to check it out. But it kept intuitively nagging at me, nagging at me, nagging at me, nagging at me, nagging at me. And I finally did it. And uh, I, ha you know, it's it's been an awesome ride ever since, and you've really assisted me a lot in my own personal evolution, and and you've really um, made an impact in my life and the lives of others I've impacted, and so on and so forth. And I thank you for that 
profusely, and I thank you again, and I, I hope you never get sick of it, because you're going to be hearing a lot of it. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, am I still being heard? I'm hearing nothing. Okay, am, am I, oh, um, I don't know if I'm still even on the show or not. If I am, Rebecca's typing to me. It says, I've been booted off the call, no longer connected. Okay, yeah, this is very strange. Um, it says my call is still connected. Um, one would uh, one would imagine that I'm still on then. Um, if you if you go to the um, <laughs> hmm, I'm typing Rebecca now. If you go to the blog talk link. Can you hear me ty uh, talking there? Um, let me grab the link for Rebecca. I'm just going to assume for the moment that I'm I'm still connected. Um, I'll worry about feeling like an idiot for possibly talking to myself later. Um, I'm on the blog talk link. It says on air. And let's see if I can hear myself feeding back here. I can. I am still live and on the line. Um, okay, I'm typing to Rebecca. I am still on the show. Wait. Um, I have an idea. Let me see what I could do here. This is technical difficulties, folks. This is amazing. I'm going to see if I can link her in in a different way. I'm going to invite Rebecca to conference. Hello. And there we are. Let me close, let me close the radio tab so that we're not feeding back into my ears here. But I verified that we are both back on the air. Um, I'm connected to the blog talk phone number, and you are connected to me via just regular Skype. So we have reestablished the connection. Wonderful. What I was saying to you that you may or may not have heard is that that's what I love about Journeys with Rebecca, all of the, all the diversity, and it's awesome. And, you know, you've really made a, a profound impact in my life, and I, I, I've told you that before, and I hope you never get sick of hearing it. Um, but I originally found you through Jalayla Star on her YouTube channel, and she had this uh, video posted called um, Teachers Team Up, and, you guys were all talking about KWR, and there you were. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, oh, I don't have time to check this out. I'm too busy, da-da-da-da-da. But it kept intuitively nagging at me, intuitively nagging at me, intuitively nagging at me. So then I got to the point of, all right, all right, all right, all right. So uh, I checked out your I show, and I've been with you ever since. I have to ask you, I'm being, I'm being called back by Jay. Do you want me to answer that and disconnect from you? What would you like for me to do? Our connection is stable, so let's keep it that way. I will merge Jay in. Okay. So you want me to decline the call? Yeah, decline the call, and I will then in turn merge Jay in. Okay. I will do it that way. Okay, let's see here. I'm inviting him into conference. The person you're trying to reach is not available. Okay, Please leave there. a message after the beep. <laughs> it's the, it's end the end of the world, world as we as know we it. Know it's 2012. <laughs> you got to love this stuff, man. If this doesn't give you a challenge in your life, I don't know what will. And you know, we have all had to learn something that most of us did not possess, and that was patience. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're talking, we're talking. The person you're trying to reach is not available. Okay. I want, does he know how to answer that? Oh, yeah, he should. I mean, it just comes up as a call. Well, Sonic is now typing into the, the one box there, so maybe you can uh, figure it out here in just a minute. We'll yeah, I'm trying to...
Yeah, because I'm the only one connected into Blog Talk right now, unless Jay can somehow get back into the I, control. I am. I'm. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Good. Uh, I lost my. You've been here. I, yeah, I, I I lost my uh, cable and had to reset. And, you, and you're still sounding real garbly. Hold yeah, on. Jay, you're sounded, you were sounding a little garbly there. He had to reset, and here's reset in the chat room. I reset. <laughs> they have a listener by the name of Reset. I like that name. That's a very cute name. I'm sure it wasn't the birth name, so it's very cute. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, his birth name was Please Be Kind Rewind. No, no. Oh, there you go. I love that. <laughs> hey, you got to love the name of Frank Zappa's kid, um, Moon Unit and Dweezil. Yeah, I'm like, well, I wonder if he was doing drugs when that happened. Do we really have to wonder? <laughs> <laughs>
Radio. Sudden bursts of randomness have been brought to you by Sonic. When you need sudden bursts of randomness, choose Sonic every time. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Welcome to 2012. You never know what's going to happen. Not even close to knowing what's going to happen. Absolutely agree with that one. Absolutely. Well, it's otherwise, right? <laughs> well, certainly it would lack some of the challenge. <laughs> hey, when I intended it to facilitate you laughing your ass off, I had no idea what was going to unfold in my reality. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. It might not come in exactly the way you were expecting. <laughs> And normally it doesn't come at all in the way that you're expecting it. That's usually the way that that one kind of rolls down uh -huh. the hill, you know. That's the lesson of Aladdin's lamb. Mm, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, what I was going to say earlier, though, you're talking about labels. There's nothing wrong with labels and definitions, but the problem is, is we've been taught to make the tools our masters when we are the ones that are supposed to gain mastery over the tools. So it, it, it made us as a civilization narrow-mindedness. It, it's, you know, but as people are waking up, I mean, you see it all over, what's happening in Anaheim, California. You see what's happening in Mexico. You see what happened in Toronto. You see what's happening in Spain. They wanted to do a false flag in Chicago with the NATO stuff. They couldn't do it. Vibratory rate too high. They were even trying to harp the crap out of us to try to get the vibratory rate lower. But nope, all the Occupy Chicago people were just out there laughing their ass off. <laughs> you got to love it. Yeah, it's just it's spreading, man. And I've lost track of how many people who suddenly, for no apparent reason, had just metaphysical or quantum awakenings of some sort. They're freaked out. It's like, man, I know stuff I didn't even believe in yesterday. What's going on? You know, I had this <laughs> conversation with a friend of mine just this morning about that very same phenomena going on. Uh, you know, I call it the trending. Uh, you, you know, from uh, my perspective, I can look out, you know, via like, you know, listening to not only the people that I interview, but also, you know, my personal clients and, you know, just, just the people that I just normally converse with on a daily basis and just paying attention to what's trending. And what's trending right now is a universal vibratory uh, wave that has transcended upon this earth that is is creating this trigger mechanism within people. As a matter of fact, I'll be talking about that tomorrow night on uh, one of my shows that I do on, on Thursday night. We're going to be talking about trigger mechanisms. and then oh, we're going to be, Yes. And so, um, and then on Friday, I'm actually doing a show on just what we're talking about now, uh, which is the trending and, you know, what this wave can portend and, uh, you know, what what may or may not be, you know, transpiring, or not this Friday, a week from Friday. Um, and really what all of this is about. And and across the board, people are, are seriously, they just like, I just know what I know. And the, I think the most fascinating thing about that is, is that, you know, through the years, I've developed my sense of awareness. And, you know, I've made it more acute. I use it. I use it every day. It's, it's just part of who I am. And and it has to, it has to do with when I was you know born into this earth where I was at and you know what was my goal and mission what was my vibratory rate when I came in as well as along the changes that that transpired you know during the course of the time that I've been here yeah and what's happening now is that the younger people uh, way younger than myself that are uh, this wave of energy this wave of vibratory um, change because all in, all energy is information. It just depends on how you perceive it and in what level you're able to um, facilitate it, if, if any at all. Yeah. So when you were a kid, you had to log into the internet using a real log, right? Cutting that wood. <laughs> well, you were watching out for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I am. Man, that must have been a hassle. It was. And actually, didn't even know what the word internet meant. You know, never heard of the word internet. Just a bunch of trees, what did you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you got, you got some of your ancient old, man. The worldwide forest. 
not very it's like a box of floppy disks. That, oh, yeah. I remember, the, I remember the floppies, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she said, unfortunately. <laughs> what TMI. TMI. <laughs> exactly. But, um, you know what? As far as awakenings and stuff and, you know, people who are, well, as you put, um, in the more useful category, they are jumping through these paradigm heaps so amazingly and doing 180 shifts in no time flat. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing it. Oh, phew. And, like, everyone's looking at them like, wow, it's amazing. And they're like, they're like what is so, what's so amazing? I just went through all this. It's like, yeah, you went through what I went through in a fraction of the time, and you did it so eloquently. You have no idea the magic that you just displayed that my jaw is at the floor of the absolute perfection of what you just did in front of me. You're such a fish in the water. You can't see the water. My friend Katerina Edwards, who I really need to mention her, she has done exactly this. We became friends back in November, now this previous November, and she was in a total 180 paradigm. I won't go into personal details, but let's say classic misery paradigm societal entrapment. And um, she has done such a 180 flip and is so much more enlightened. And it's amazing how she manifests things because all of a sudden she was manifesting a 10-day meditation retreat. <laughs> Then out of the clear blue sky, she manifests coming to Chicago. So, yes, I got video of her here and stuff, and she's real awesome to hang out with. She'll be doing that again in the future. And now she's in Hawaii, and she's, she's woofing on an organic farm. And um, she's really learned a lot there. Then she's going to be going to some other, one, another island on Hawaii. And then from there, who knows, might be back to Portland, Oregon, might be to Chicago, to Canada. She's just going global. And it's awesome because she's proof that you don't have to be a multi, multi, multi millionaire to do all this. And you just have to set your intention and align yourself. And she's a painter, and she draws, and she sings, and she plays piano, and she's a poet. And you could find her on Facebook by just uh, searching for Kat Katerina Edwards. Her, her website is also katerinaedwards.deviantart.com but she's listened to some of your radio shows she especially liked it when you had Sienna online I mean that impacted her to the point of tears and in the best possible way and she's looking forward to listening to um, Sex, Sexuality and the Shift with Laura Harold um, the one where you gave a shout out to Katie <laughs> and um, you know she's looking forward to that she's just been a bit busy with stuff but um You've impacted her. You've greatly impacted me. You've, your show has helped more people than you can imagine because you're like the stone going into the center of the pond and the earth is the pond. You can't see all of your ripples, but you have been making them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's the, uh, um, thank you for that. You know, really, um, I'm, I'm extraordinarily, I'm extraordinarily humbled by that. And, um, that's the second time in 24 hours I was given that message. So you know, I, 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 I would thank you for that. You're welcome, and it's my pleasure. Um, one of these one of these days, if it's cool, and, and also if it's cool with Katarina, it'd be cool if uh, you, me, Katarina, and Jake could maybe hang out on your show sometime. You never know what, where this is all going to take us, right? You know, <laughs> know where the journey's going. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, I have to tell you, you know, through the years, I've, I've, I've learned to look back to figure out where I started from and how it, and how and where I'm at. Not as an indicator of a unit of measurement, have I grown, have I not grown. It's about my perspective. When I started this, I had a, I had, there's the radio show. When, when I started it, I had an idea of what this was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm basing it now. Honestly, I'm basing it off of uh, what little I knew about radio, <laughs> which was nothing. I mean, I was I mean, on I was television. On I mean, I, I was one of those people who got my car turned on the radio. <laughs> yep. Right? I listened to the radio. Uh, was never behind the mic uh, much. I mean, I was being interviewed, but I, I still didn't give it any thought, you know. And so here I am. I'm looking backwards in time, and I'm looking at, again, sitting in my little space, 
uh, lining up people, uh, doing these pre-recorded interviews because that was the only way you could do them. I remember having my very first live show. Uh, I remember thinking who I wanted to have on, what kind of information I wanted to share, um, you know, what it all meant, and uh, how it was, you know, going to progress. Yeah. Right. So you have a, you know, you have a general idea, right? You have kind of goals, kind of set for your own personal goals. Uh, set. Right. And you know, I, and I have to say, and I'm going to say this, and, and and I don't think I've actually ever mentioned this before, but when I started the radio show, it wasn't about ratings. It wasn't about notoriety. It wasn't about fame. It wasn't about fortune. It wasn't about any of that. It was a message from my divine guidance that said, you need to do a radio show because there are many people who have a piece to this puzzle you called life, and what is the point? Yeah, you've said right? that you said that many times, and I agree with you every time you say it. I think that's awesome, that's awesome to, uh, to go into, go into that, that that sense of that wanting, wanting the, that unity and that that sharing. Whereas most people go into stuff with that like that selfish. Oh, I, I want fame. I want power. I want money. It, and it's, <laughs> it's never. But I will tell you now. I've had some people that have aligned or tried to align themselves with me. I can't. I can't be. You know. Uh, I, I need to let people know this isn't all just been a bed of roses either because this is really oh, yeah. a challenge for me. It's, first of all, it's to keep myself on air uh, amidst all those that would try to control and manipulate, first of all, how I do my work and, and, and who should be uh, the people I should have on, how it should be formatted, who, uh, you know, all of that. I mean, I had, I had lots of people that tried to step into place and, and try to control and manipulate this flow, this, this yeah. organic piece. Of, of my life, uh, and it certainly it's certainly infiltrated everyone else that's else that, 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 that's been on the show, that's been a participant in the show. Of course. Uh, I've watched people just have wonderful things happen to them afterwards. There's some, There's kind, some of, kind of magic to it. There I'm is. Not, I'm there not creating is. it. All I'm doing is following it. You know, I, I need to, you know, again, going back to this is what they asked me to do. This is what I'm still doing. And until the time comes when I'm not doing this anymore, I will do it until I don't. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I've always loved about your show because what, even when I was listening to, you know, stuff where I wasn't listening live, there's just a magic in it and even more so when it was live. I mean, I, I swear the synchronicities would be through the roof. I mean, if I was like cleaning my room or something, and, and if I started organizing CDs, all of a sudden you just randomly point out, yeah, that reminds me, you know, I bought the CD the other day or something like that. I'd be like, oh, my God. So, you know, it's like that sort of stuff would happen and happen and happen and happen and happen. And there's de definitely just, um, a, just a, a magic about your show. And, you know, like you said, it's not you that's creating the magic. It's, it's your your intentions that you're putting out is kind of, shall we say, a permission slip or an excuse for aspects of mass consciousness to come together at one point and co-create. So it's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about Jay, it's not about JP, it's not about Wolf's Fear, it's not about any one of us. It's about all of us collectively. Granted, sovereignly, yes, we are each sovereign individuals and, and we should be, but you can really only co-create with other sovereign individuals, at least any point of efficiency anyway. Everybody's sovereignty has to be respected. It's a beautiful thing. It, it really is. And your show is, has amazed me and inspired me. And even Katarina's helped so many other people. She's, she's helped me. Isn't it amazing how, how wonderful of mirrors our friends can be, especially when they're showing us what we're refusing to face and pissing us off. They're the best mirrors ever at that point. <laughs> and I remember when you were going through your it, right right at the end of your year year of hell there that I was detecting intuitively and it it was driving me nuts and I finally got a, the courage I'm like God damn it I'm just gonna jump in and somehow some way I don't know how or what way I'm gonna jump in and tell Rebecca that she's important 
And don't, and in my humble opinion, not in order and opinion, my humble opinion, you better stay on the air and you better go with your own flow and stop listening to anybody who's trying to control you because, God damn it, you deserve to be able to do it your own way. And we had that call right before the solstice of 2011, if you recall that. I do. And it was really amazing because um, it, it, it was just, it, it, it was just amazing how much we both reflected to each other and it's like you were – and it, it was really cool how, like, there was a lot of, like – I was being a mirror and, and, and inadvertently pushing pushing a lot of your buttons, and you were getting more than a little mad at me for part of the time. But it was cool how we both realized it, and we just went into sync, and then we would start busting out laughing about it each time. And we would just go into this, like, laughter because – you know, we realized what was going on, and we realized we were we were mirroring each other. And I was just like, "Hey, it's all good, you know. You're human too." And you know, and I said that when it comes to people with intuition, such as you, such as me, such as a lot of people, and that's not something I openly advertise. Yes, I have intuition. I don't channel any anybody, quote unquote, but I have intuition. People don't realize that when we get into emotional ruts. That antenna that connects us to, to our intuition, it's bent, and there's a big thunderstorm over us, and reception is for crap. So then people look at that, and it's like, oh, well, how dare you be human? You're supposed to be the great and almighty Rebecca, or the great and almighty Dave, or the great and almighty Dave Corso, or the great and almighty whoever. It's like, what? No, we're not. We're human like you. <laughs> Well, and you know, I, I have to I have to say for those that are out there listening, um, because not everyone's privy to this, this this these pieces of information that you're that you're currently sharing, right? They're not privy to uh, all of that, and and I have to say that the year 2011, um, although I I personally call it my year of hell. And, you know, as an, a very aware person, that's just my terminology for the huge, and I do mean the huge amounts of uh, challenges that were presented to me repeatedly from the very, from day one, as soon as, literally, as soon as that calendar changed to January 1st, 2011, I was in for the bumpiest of rides that I have had up to this point. Um, I was so terrifically blindsided um, by that year. And a, a lot of personal things went on in that year, uh, in 2011. You know, I lost my dad. Um, and, you know, and, and losing a parent is bad enough. But then I have already lost my mom, right? I lost her years ago. But on top of all of that, there was the closing down of the family, you know, where I grew up. You know, there was letting go of all that. There was the meeting of all of my my brothers. You know, you don't ever hear me talk about my family because I'm not close with my brothers. Uh, not by my choice, but by their choice. And um, so there was all of that stuff to deal with. Um, there was just huge shifts in, in people's personalities. Um, things that were not ever known to me. Uh, based on those uh, people that were, some of them were the closest ones that w were nearest to me. Um, and, and some of the most horrendous behaviors from people <clears throat> came forward in 2011. And it was just a constant blindsiding and onslaught of four months onslaught of, of negative energy. And no matter how I cleared it, no matter what I did, the next day brought something else and something else after that and something else after that until it reached a pinnacle. It reached a pinnacle. It reached its peak. It reached its, its height. And at that point is when I said, okay, I'm not doing the radio show at this point. I'm not going to do anything at this point because I need to step back, reflect, and figure out what is all of this about and what do I, what do, I need do, with to do with it. So what so happened, what happened at, that at that point? point? I, I, I couldn't I absolutely, absolutely quit doing the doing show. show. I mean, I, I, mean, just, I, just, I, just, I couldn't. I couldn't. It was a baby. So I said, I'll go I'll do go one, one a month, month show. Once a month. I'll do a special show. 
So for the last three months of 2011, that's what I did. I did a monthly show. And um, when January 2012 came, I was sitting there going, okay, so now what? What do I do now? And I'm just, just you know, letting things flow. I, I'm just going, okay, so whatever it is, it's going to just present itself. And then it did. All of a sudden, I had offers and offers and offers, please come to my radio station, please come to my radio station, please come to my radio station. And now I'm, you know, inundated <laughs> with all of this all other and other, and I'm like, oh, oh I'm supposed to do it here. here. So I so stood I back and back, I looked at that for a while. And to try to figure out really what worked for me. It was no longer about what worked for everybody else. It had to work for me as well. You know, there had to be this synergistic and symbiotic relationship between the work that I do, the in-service work that I do, the yeah. being of service, as well as, as what works for me for my own evolution, oh, for yeah. my own going forward. Yeah, you definitely got to put yourself first. People think it's selfish, but it's not, because I like it's to say like that... It. Yeah, I like to I like to say this. If if you want to share a plate of cookies, you have to have a plate of cookies in the first place to share. That's right. That's absolutely right. And that's very that's a very good way of putting that. And if you don't have a plate of cookies to share, then you don't have much plate of cookies to share. It's just that simple. Uh -huh. so, you know, I mean, it gets no better than that 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 statement right there for you, Dave. Really. Amen. Amen. So you know, and and so now as I sit back and I look at it. I have relinquished, no, uh, you know, I've relinquished um, uh, the ideas, some of the ideas that I thought had to be in place. And these are processes more than they were anything else. And I realized that there was a much simpler way for this, for this to be done, this, this back to this very organic space. Uh, from where I started with this, like I said, which is pre-recording in a, you know, in a little room uh, you know, setting up appointments with people and, and then burning them off from tape onto a, a CD player was very <laughs> cumbersome. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, mean, I, can, imagine. I can imagine. I can imagine. You went, you went old school to new school and just jumped through the hoops with elegance and grace. <laughs> <laughs> just when something would present itself, I said, sure, let me try that. It's got to be better than what I'm doing. <laughs> So I'm so much more. Uh, I'm I, proud of you. I, I, I must say that. I'm really proud of you. I know more of the details than, than you admit publicly, obviously, because we had our private conversations. But I can say I'm proud of you. I am really proud of you. Just the way you navigated 2011 was just magical. And, and where you've been and where you've come to, it's just, I am so I am proud of you. Not even not funny. Even. Thank you thank so you. much. That, really, that, really honest, honest, honest. thank you. Um, it, 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 and, I, and I still have some vestiges of that uh, last year that um, are, are kind of just hanging out there. I call them the loose ends. It's the, you know, I, I'm just waiting for, again, it's, you know, you, you put it out there. You call it intention. Uh, many people call it intention, and it's not my intention. It's an understanding that when you have unresolved anything, no matter what it is, whether it be a positive or a negative, depending on how you, you know, contextually look at that. Yeah. Um, uh, when you have something that's left unfinished, unknowing, unresolved, if you just set it, like set it up on a shelf. It but grows. It, <laughs> no, in your view, in your view, you have to set it up on a shelf, but it has to be in your view. Oh, okay. When you set something up on a shelf in view, but you're not interacting with it. You're just setting it up there. So every time you glance around the room, so to speak, that issue, that whatever, is sitting there. And at some point, you're going to have another piece that you're going to be able to pull that down off of the shelf, put this piece into it. Now it's removed from the shelf completely, and it'll no longer have to be in your view. That it makes just, sense. Yes, and that's how it works for me. I mean, that's just... That's how it's always just happened. It's like when I have, remember I was telling you at the very beginning here, I said one of the things that this time space does right now for many people, if they have not gotten this yet, is to learn how to have some patience. Because if they don't have patience, you are, talk about a stress level overload, 
this is, you know, just our little fiasco here getting on the air. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, if, if you were an easily excitable person, if you get easily frustrated, if you, you know, things have to work a certain way, if you have an expectation of an outcome and it does not show itself that way, you can literally drive yourself bananas, raise your blood oh, pressure, yeah. make your whole day miserable, and That's anybody cool. else that happens to be standing in the room with you, you're God help them. <laughs> So if you just uh, look back and you go, and I, and I did, I just waited. I was like, well, this is going to happen. It's just not going to happen exactly at 4 o'clock. Uh, It'll happen uh, when, it's, when it happens. It's all clear up, and then when it does, then we'll be able to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. well, it's what I like to say to the people who, who see the misery paradigm as being the only reasonable thing, because that, that's another thing people don't understand about, like, law of attraction, law of alignment. It doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you insist must be the absolute most real reality in your reality. And some people are just like, but but there's no there's no good. All I see is this crap. And I'm like, hey, if you're looking at the ground, all you're going to see is the ground. And if you're in disbelief of the sky and someone says, hey, just look up and see the sky, they're going to go, I'm not going to do that. That would be too easy. The sky isn't up there. So then they wonder why they're always looking at the ground and seeing nothing but the dog poop down there. <laughs> and it's that simple. It really is. So getting back to this whole patience thing, right? Yep. Yeah, this is 2012 is, is the year, um, and, and they've been hearing me for this. Now, let me let me assure you, as I'm sitting here, <laughs> I'm sitting here, patience, and I've said this a million times on my show. Dave, hey, shut up! Oh, sorry, yep. that was another thing. <laughs> patience is not a virtue. I had to work to learn patience because I had none. I had, I had zip, zip, nada, zilch patience when I was a young woman. And, okay, I, had, and I, had, I had to learn that. Or you could say it's, it's a virtue that we have the free will choice to deny, ignore, and not allow ourselves, and we have to learn how to allow things because we're so taught to disallow. Lack, struggle, limitation, that's the reality. Real OCD. <laughs> We are all recovering control freaks, as we're yes, like we to are. say. <laughs> we really are. We truly are. Uh, Want to know something, Rebecca? Yeah. You know why we're even able to be here on the show and why I'm hooked up with Type 1 Radio at all? Because, because of you. Of, actually. So we've come full circle. Because of you and because of your Facebook group, my posts were being watched by none other than Jay Larson. Mm -hmm. And that's how that all connected. He added me as a friend one day. He added me on Skype. We started talking, collaborating, multimedia projects, radio shows, things like that. It's just been building in the flow. And then I've been able to, to meet uh, Carolyn and Retta and, and Reset, a.k.a. Brett, and, and Sonic and Psychic and Steve and all these other wonderful, awesome people. Thanks to you, Rebecca. Hmm. Well, let me let me also say here to this, because of uh, you showing up, just because you made a choice one day to show up, you need to thank yourself for stepping into the sink and flow of your life that allowed to take you to the point you've, you've arrived at at this moment. Agreed. So, so I, that, I think that's the other portion of this is that we, all of us, individually and collectively have to look at where have we arrived at. It's not about the destination, guys. It really about is. about the journeys. It the really journey. is. That, that, yes, and <laughs> that was part of the, the thing I was getting to in the very beginning when we got cut off was the name of the show. I, I didn't really understand fully what that name meant, Journeys with Rebecca. All I knew was that was the name that they gave, they gave me, me and that's that the name, name that, I used. that I used. So as I coined that, I, I found later that many other people were using that same journeys this and journeys that because it is about the journey. It's not about the destination. Amen. It's not it's about, not the, about end the end result. It's, it's not about arriving at a certain place at a certain time. It's about, it's about, about the journey. Awesome. Awesome. And I did I realize the extent and how really profound that was 
until again, I started looking backwards, right? Yep. Not, and I'm just looking at where have I come from and where, you know, where, where, what has this journey just stepping into and listening to them saying, this is what I wish for you to do. You need to get people on. You need, they need to share their information. You need to share yours. This needs to be a sharing, 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 sharing informational kind of a deal. Absolutely. You know what you keep reminding me of? When you would talk, when you would talk about rewriting history and timelines mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. what a lot of that is actually about is that one little piece of information, one new little tiny lesson in the now, rewrites the perspective of your entire past because you're able to see it from a completely different point of view. Right. And re reality is created from point of view anyway. That's right. And it's amazing. I learned one little tiny lesson which changes everything I thought I'd know about anything. You know, and, and it brings to clarity also what Barbara Marciniak was saying about how when you have a drama, get through it, but kind of file it away. Don't, don't judge it negatively because the drama you had now will 20 years later, you know, be an opportunity for some sort of clarity or whatever. When I first heard that, I'm just looking like, what are you talking about? We just, you know, but now it's like I understand that now I learned something and then it reminds me of something that happened before and I'm looking back on it in a whole different light and I'm like, oh my God, I thought I understood why that happened. I was wrong. Now I understand why that happened. And, and so, just, so, and then, so here's the other point. So, in this moment, you understood what differently what happened back then, right? And then maybe tomorrow, five years from now, fifty years from now, you'll get another glimpse of it from a whole another perspective, and you'll look at it and go, "Wow, that was even deeper than I remember it being." Even five seconds from now, yes. time compression, you know. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And so, I think that's that's what's, you know, this whole thing, this whole journey of life to me is, is such a magnificent um, ride. It's a, it's a magnificent ride in, in all of our moments of being human and that is, you know, that is when we're, you know, in our stress modes, when we're in our happy modes or whatever the case may be when we're having, you know, a, a very challenging human moment. And we have to realize that we are human, and that's what we've come here to experience. It doesn't mean you need to stay in that state of being. Agreed. But to experience it, whether it be grief or sadness or trauma or drama or negativity or an argument or screaming or whatever it is, it's okay. Move beyond it when the time comes because all you're doing is expressing yourself as yeah. a human, and when you look at it later, because we all do, we all, most of us, okay, <laughs> we look backwards and go, gosh, I could have handled that way differently. I could have, and it's not, it's not a regretful thing. It's an illumination. It's showing love to your recovering control for things. Yes. <laughs> and it's also showing an understanding that I could have done that differently. And the more you become aware of your past behaviors, the more you have clarity on how to let go of that manipulation control mechanisms, whatever it is that you were hanging on to in that moment that seemed so important that you had to be right or whatever it was, right? Yeah. No pun intended with all the right, right, left, right, right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you, you, you sit in this moment and you go, okay, got it. And there's some, there's humility and there's humble, there's humbleness about it, right? And, and when you go forward from this day forward, you are more aware of not being reactive. Yeah. I've to I totally know what you mean. You do realize you are a very prolific speaker, right? No. You, I, you, re you really are. It's just there's so, 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 I mean, we are both, both of us are prone to rants. And it's like, I love your rants because they are just so from the heart and meaningful, and they really strike home. And, you know, people say that about my ranch, too, and I was never able to see it. I mean, you know, when the fish is in water, it has no awareness of the water, right? So it needs constant reflection, the quantum mirror, so to speak. And, I mean, just I know that that you might not have any idea of just how 
Plurific uh, and awesome just a speaker you are and that when you go into your rant, you know, and you're, you're always like, oh, well, excuse me, I'm prone to rant. <laughs> like, I do the same thing. But you have no idea just how awesome and inspiring your rants are and just how many jaws are dropped to the floor when you finally go quiet. <laughs> I always thought was people was going, wow, is she done? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it's because it's because you're making people think. You're you really you're really saying stuff that hits home, and it just leaves people it's speechless. speechless. And speaking of saying, are state, you saying stuff state. that hits home? I'd like you to say some URLs and information that hits home pages, your website, websites, Facebook, whatever. Everybody, get out your pens, pencils, notepad, text files. Whatever, we're going to get in some shameless plugs here for Rebecca's website. <laughs> Take it away, advertise. Oh, you're so cute. Thank you. Well, really, I love you too. <laughs> I do. I mean it. I, I really do. You're awesome. I love you too. You're I a good do. friend, and I appreciate you a lot. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the work that you do. Anyway, people can find me at, at my website, journeyswithrebecca.com. That's J O U R N E Y S, journeyswithrebecca.com. And on that website, on every page, there uh, to the left, there's a little colored bar, and you'll you slide down a little bit. You'll see where there, it says to sign up for a free newsletter, and it really is free. It's free and it's confidential. I don't uh, have any control over it. I just have the list, and I just send out a newsletter about once a week. Um, today, I actually sent out two in one day, and it had been almost two weeks since I sent out my last one because I had sent out a newsletter and then got some new information <laughs> and then had to send it out again. Yep, so, that. yeah, and I, I do. And so I don't inundate anyone's, I try not to inundate anyone's email box. Uh, but when stuff changes, I need to make sure that the appropriate people obviously get their stuff out so that people know what's going on, especially when the guests are concerned. So in the newsletter, though, uh, it, it's jam-packed full of information. It tells you where to go listen. However, at my website, you'll see a tab on this. It's JWR Radio. If you click on that tab, there's going, you'll find two players. One is for Wolf Spirit Radio. The other one is for Freedom Slips. And on that page will tell you where you can find me and which of the players to use. There's also a chat box in there uh, that is monitored during the live show. So if there are questions or people have any uh, problems logging on to either one of the uh, players, there's people in there to assist you to answer those questions for you. Um, there's also the Real Women tab. Uh, that's for the radio show that is on uh, 7 p.m. on Thursday evenings at Central Time with my co-host, Sienna Leah. And that's Real Women Stepping Up and the Men Who Love Them. And uh, We love you, Rebecca. Thank <laughs> you. And so that's my newest endeavor. That's my newest radio show. Um, I see that moving into a different direction. Uh, I see that as actually ending up becoming something other than just a radio show. We'll be doing this as, as a different kind of a format as time rolls forward. But right now it works really well for a radio show. Um, there's also services on there. There's an events tab. The events tab is where I announce where all of my um, classes are going to be held and when and how you can get home as well as that I'm planning a trip uh, to Egypt. Um, wow. Yeah. Man, I yeah. wish I could go. Yeah, for <laughs> real. For real. For real. I, I'm going to be there with Carrie Cassidy, Michael Tellinger, Jordan wow. Maxwell, Hugh, Hugh Grant. Uh, we're all going for the huge thing in 2012, and we'll, and it's a it's a fantastic trip because it's not a tourist trap. When you come uh, to Chicago, this is uh, the Energy Center. Yeah. <laughs> when you come we to just, Chicago, <laughs> we just we just gotta set something up, baby. We can do that. That would anyway, be awesome. Yeah, we can, I love Chicago because it's up there by my 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 face. I'm you know, from Michigan, so I would um, love to see you. Love to get yeah. a big hug in person. That would be great. That would be great. Anyway, so there's a trip there, and if anybody, uh, you know, I, everyone has, uh, Michael's going to be doing some stuff, Carrie's uh, going to be doing some stuff, I'm going to be doing some stuff, you know, I, I do some meditations, uh, we're going to be doing some speaking, we're going to have a panel group, uh, it's, but it's going to be casual, it's not going to be formal, there's nothing formal about this, this is about like-minded people connecting during this very, very important transitional shift, energetically speaking. So um, hopefully those of you who are interested in going um, and would like to join me on this trip, that information can also be found on the events tab on my website. 
um, again, that's journeyswithrebecca.com. And really, there is where you can find everything. It's the radio shows. It's the events. It's the classes. It's the readings. It's all the types of readings. Um, it's the Elohim information. There's free meditations. Um, there's, and there's more coming. I have a, a lot more that I just haven't had a chance to upload yet. That sounds great. Can anyone, anyone sign up for the, for the Egypt trip if they have the money to go? Or is this a closed event? Or no, it's not a closed event. It is not a closed event. Um, yes, anybody can. If, if you are listening to this um, thing, though, make sure that you tell them that if you do sign up, that you signed up because you heard it from me. So Because they're trying to track a little bit about where people are coming from um, just for future trips that, that may be in the works as well. So, um, um, but, but if they click right on that link from my website, it should take them right to a place. And you don't have to have all the money up front. Uh, you can put down deposits and then make payments on it and things like that. Yes, folks, mention Rebecca, and you won't be forced to walk through the alligator pit, we promise. Oh, uh, that wouldn't be fun at all. <laughs> Besides, uh, the question, uh, crocodiles sorry, in Egypt. <laughs> oh, crocodiles, alligators, whatever. You say tomato, <laughs> I say tomato. Same genome, right? Uh, <laughs> but I, I have a question also. Um, as I heard, I don't know how true this is, but, I mean, I've noticed that the poles seem to be shifting. The sun is so far west now that if it was any farther west, it would be north. And people are like, oh, it's tilt of the earth, tilt of the earth. It's like, okay, everyone's noticing it's farther over, so whatever. It was suggested to me that the pyramids being, like, completely mathematically, astronomically accurate to everything, that there's a way to use the pyramid to measure where the sun is to so where it's supposed to be. You can use it as a measurement tool to find out exactly how much the poles have shifted, if they shifted or not, by lining that thing up with the sun. How true is that? And if it's true, does that sound like a fun experiment for when you're there? Um, it sounds like an absolutely excellent experiment while I'm there. And it's a navigational uh, tool, to be sure, uh, much like reading a star map, which, you know, it's part of the visionary process that they put me through every once in a while, these star maps that I have no clue as to where I'm looking at. But yeah. I keep getting shown these star maps, and they're not of this galaxy, uh, at least that I'm aware of. So, yes, but l l I'd like to speak to, I'd like to speak to the... Uh, sun thing that you were talking about. Yeah. Um, again, another trending thing that's happened. So weeks ago, actually about two months ago, I'm sitting at my friend's house, and I was down there last year visiting her around the same time. And uh, I'm sitting out there, and I'm, I'm looking. She has a garden out there, right? And I, I'm looking out there, and I was like, you know, I said, that garden's in the shade. And I said, it's only 4.30 in the afternoon. I said, it wasn't like that last year. Mm -hmm. I said, I guarantee you that that garden was not in the shade at 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, you know what? That happened to me and, me and my dad a, a few weeks ago because both me and him have always been able to tell, tell the rough time by the position of the sun in the sky. We'd never usually be off by more than a half hour, an hour. At right. the most, usually like 15 minutes to a half hour. Right. So, so I asked my dad, I'm like, hey, what time is it? He was going to check his cell, and he's like, you know what? Why am I doing that? I can look at the sun. So he, he looked at the sun, and he said, okay, it's around 2 o'clock. So then he checks his phone, and he's like, watch, I'll be right. Checks his phone, and he goes, what? It's almost 5. That's completely wrong. And the, we both said at the same time, pull shift. Yeah, and, and so the next thing is, is I'm sitting, uh, a couple of days later, I'm sitting in her living room. And then all of a sudden I look up and I said, you know, I said, I sat in your living room last year. And I said, and I can guarantee you that the sun was not sitting and shining in your room the way that it is now. Oh, synchronicity, my bedroom, same thing. So I brought this up on my show a few weeks ago. I was talking about this very same thing. Now, all of a sudden, people are beginning to talk about it, about, you know, <laughs> was it a gravitational shift? Was it a magnetic shift? What was, you know, you know, we're in an elliptical orbit. Um, and my suspect is, is besides tilting, right, and uh, just due to 
I think just due to the energetic forces that are out in this in our solar system that's going on right now, and based on where we are in the elliptical pattern that this Earth goes around, floats around out here in our solar system, it has created an additional tilt. And you're absolutely right. When I'm looking north, I'm almost looking to what I would have last year looked at as east. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's just it's just shifted. I mean, and the weather, other than the fact that they're also screwing with it, we're besides that point. The weather has shifted the climate because we have shifted. The Earth itself has shifted, so the climate itself has shifted. So the weather is different. I said that all yeah. backwards. I had to put it. I had to reframe it. Sorry about that. Yeah, Chicago's got Kentucky weather now, and I I know that weather because I've been to Southern Illinois. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah, and now that when the sun sets, it's blaring in my bedroom window. My bedroom window faces north. I could never, ever, ever see the sunset coming into my window. And now my wall is showing up all sorts of pretty patterns and designs that never used to be there. And people, I, I made a video on the pole shift stuff on YouTube, and people are all like, oh, tilt to the earth. It moves back and forth a little bit because of the seasons, da 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 You know, when I showed the video of, of the sun where it was to where it is, oh, it's the seasons. And it's like, well, then how come it's, a, it's a, so far north, uh, you know, everyone in Chicago is noticing. How come the sun never used to set in my frickin' window facing north, and now it sets in my frickin' window and beams frickin' bozo rays to my wall, making frickin' patterns? How come it's never done this, and now it's doing that? And people can't answer me. Yeah, and it's it's about there's a, there's at least in my in my guesstimation a minimum of a two hour and I'm using a, a time as 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 the uh, measurement here. There's a two hour shift. So whatever that that looks like degree wise, I can't tell you. I don't know how the the timeline you know the linear time breaks down mathematically to how many degrees that it causes the shift. So but we're looking at a minimum of two hours of which, a shift. 15 which is, degrees on my estimate. No, uh, on, an hour, on, on an hour's time, uh, we move uh, a 1,000 miles. Uh, we, we cover uh, in tw uh, 24 hours, uh, half that peri uh, period of 24 hours would be the normal 12 that we work with. So each uh, it's in each sign for approximately two hours, which would be uh, about uh, 30 degrees. Oh wow, it's doubled then. Well, that's just unheard of. If this it, well, so even if it's 15 yeah. was was astronomical, but yeah. anywhere between 15 and 30 degrees, that's one heck of a shift. Uh, I mean, that is a huge, huge shift in. In, in where our Earth sits in her rotation. And it, it is creating a lot of weather changes. So, you know, people were talking about the pole shifts, yes, and they're talking about all of this. Well, you know, and, and some of the information that's come in, the channeled information is, is that maybe it's not a pole shift as, as, as opposed to the north and south flip-flopping, but perhaps it's a magnetic shift, a shift yeah. in magnetics. And in still in all, that still brings a lot of, physical earth changes, you know, the tectonic plates start oh, yeah. moving, stuff starts bubbling, starts, stuff comes up, stuff goes down, you know, stuff dries up, stuff floods. <clears throat> I mean, the weather is absolutely flip-flopped. Oh, yeah. Again, you know, and I have to say this, I have to say this, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and I don't buy into all the conspiracy theories, but I know what I see. And one Bingo. of the things that I can tell you is that I've always looked at, when I look up at the sky, and this happened to me many years ago, I looked up in the sky and I said, it's unnatural. And I had no idea what I meant by that until time goes on, and I, I got a better understanding of where and what that unnatural meant to me and what it means for everybody now. Oh, yeah. But I, I look up in the skies, and what I can see is that there was a trend here that, that, that those that already knew what this was about, right, they already knew this, they then accentuate the negative 
with compounding it by whatever means that they can to compound it in order to create even worse <laughs> conditions by stepping on, hijacking, big piggybacking on that which is already naturally occurring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, like, for example, when the, when the CME hit um, in, in 2011, People are like, well, the, the CME caused, uh, the, you know, the tsunami. Well, um, no, it, it, it kind of didn't. It, it, was, it was because the CME was happening at the same time. It made a good cover. But you don't have two epicenters for one earthquake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, you know, people lose their common sense. That's the other thing. People lose their common sense. And you have to, you know... You ask yourself, does that make sense, what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm totally, you know, agreeing with, with you there. It's just people need to learn to use discernment and, and stop believing what people tell them and just look around and, and go, okay, you know, well, what's up with this? And, and, you know, and it's, the, the chemtrail thing has become so disgusting that I'm seeing chemtrails in commercials for dog treats. I mean, yes. they're, they're trying to put it off. It's like, look, this is normal. Screw you. No, it's not. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but that is the way that it's being done. I was watching TV the other day, and this was a, a, a very benign TV show. You know, like I watch HGTV when I watch TV, you know, a very benign show. So they're, they're showing uh, somebody standing outside looking at this house, right? They're going to buy this house. They want to buy this house. And there it is, right, smack on TV when they point the cameras up so that they can see there's nothing but chemtrails all over in the skies. And this was taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, want to know something real sick? You know, you know that, um, that cartoon Cars? Yes. I, I, well, Katie was watching it in the living room one day, and so I was talking to Katie, and my attention turns to the TV, and in this little, I forgot if it was Cars or Cars 2 or what it was, but they were having this little race in the desert, right? Mm -hmm. And you look up in the sky, and it's loaded with chemtrails, and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Unfortunately, Unfortunately no. no. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. Very sad deal there, let me tell you. They're Very trying, yeah, trying to program the little kids into thinking that chemtrails are normal. And they're natural. They're naturally occurring phenomena. Human, well, they're only natural to the point of humans are natural and humans have free will, but that's really <laughs> splitting the hair thin. <laughs> a little thinner than what I care to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, of course, I'm saying of course that as a way of feel. jokingly mocking the Illuminati. I'm not saying that to any point of seriousness. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we thought. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think I know you well enough to know that that's probably not truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unless, unless, unless truth and BS are suddenly synonyms and the Illuminati would like to, to make us think so. Um. Mm, there you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. A little close to home for some of them right there, that comment. Yeah. I, li <laughs> I like what Dave Corso says. Play the Illuminati's game, but play it your way. Yeah. They don't know how to deal with that. You know, um, and, and, and I'm saying this in all honesty, I don't give all of that a whole lot of thought, and I'll tell you why I don't give it a lot of thought. Um, I, I always do things my own way, and I don't, I don't care if it, it, it makes anyone mad or not. You know, that isn't my ultimate goal. <laughs> Amen. My ultimate goal is just to do what I know is right. I had to learn to do what, uh, that exact same thing because I was so trapped in the misery paradigm of, oh, you've got to do everything the way everyone else thinks you should do it. And then I would wonder why everything I would try to do would only succeed to a point and then collapse on itself an epic failure. And I'd be like, what am I doing wrong? What I'm doing wrong is not aligning with myself. Yeah. That's what I was doing wrong. Oh, yeah. And speaking of Dave Corso, he's uh, chatting with me. Uh, very interesting. Um, you know, I, I have. I, I'd like to. Uh, he can join us if he wants. No, he's, yeah. he's running this 
station there. So oh, okay, it's, cool. Yeah, no, but it's cool. Um, he's a lovely man. Uh, one he of my, is. I love him. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's really, really, really uh, just a lovely human being. Um, he's um, really a lovely really human being. being. And, and, you know, we should you know, all, we should have, all have, have people like that like, in our lives that we can truly say that and mean that about them. And I, I mean that as well. Like you and Jay and Katerina and all these other people that I know. <laughs> there you go. It, it, is a, it is a very good thing. And, and more and more, I, I really want people to hear this, more and more we are going to need each other. Yeah. And more and more are we going to have to be accepting of each other in our differences as well as our sameness. Yeah. We're all going to have to learn to be tolerant of uh, differences of opinions, and we have to learn how to figure out how to do that so that we're not uh, we're not um, giving up of our own self, our own beliefs, our own knowing, right, our own sovereignty. Agreed. But also not finding fault because somebody else has a di whole different truth that they're vibrating to. Agreed. And, and, and learning how that we can coexist without having to fight about it, without yeah. having to argue about it, without having to prove one is right and one is wrong, without yeah. one is better, one is worse. You know, the information I got um, a few weeks ago, and this is part of what is going to be that I'll be talking about with Terry Cassidy. We're doing a special show uh, a week from Friday. It's going to be four hours. And and we're talking about some of the, the points that I've been making today. And one of them that I brought up with her was the information was this, is that they gave this to me a while back, a few weeks ago. Could be months ago now. I don't know. Time really has <laughs> opened for me. Yeah. Uh, but we're what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a new world. Oh yeah. You you cannot create a new world if you take with you all of the old stuff. Einstein said something similar. He said you cannot pull solutions out of a box of problems. Yeah. And in this case, that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about old ideals, old uh, methodologies, old processes, old reactionary things. Um, things triggered us the way that they used to. If you take all of the, any of that old junk and try to create something new, you'll only be able to create that something new for as long as you can hold your attention span to that. And the old programming, the old portion, the familiar portion, that which is easier to operate out of, will then begin to show its ugly head again. <laughs> so we all have to learn how to let go of how we've been and realize that that's not how we need to, to create whatever we're creating for our future. Because it's not our legacy anymore. We're leaving this legacy to those younger generations. Yeah. We must leave a legacy that is way better than what we found it. Absolutely, positively agreed. And what one thing we, when we start to realize that, sometimes we get into the trap while we're integrating and we say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just impulsively. And the other day, and, and I, I love this, again, I, I, God bless Katerina, she just, she, she, instead of me saying, you, you don't have to apologize for being yourself, she beat me to it. She said, I'm sorry, and then she's like, why am I apologizing for being myself? I said, I have absolutely no idea. Mm -hmm. She's like, I need to stop doing that. I'm like, that really sounds like a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yeah. For real, it does. It sounds like an absolutely perfect plan, actually. You bet. Absolutely sounds perfect. So and, and, apologize and, for being you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And, you know, I, I, people still are triggered by that. They're still triggered by somebody knows more than they do. Uh, somebody has more answers than they do. They know, they know this. They know that. It's always this comparison of yourself to other people because we all speak differently. We all walk through this world at, at a slightly different gait, a different vibration, a different outlook, a different perspective. Yes, we're all here sharing this space together, but we're also uniquely individual as well. I mean, Thank God for life not being boring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, seriously. There's a lot of same and similarities you'd have to in order to have a species to be able to get yeah. along, right? To be able to coexist. And we don't do that very well either, but you know, just saying. 
We know, do do that very well. We choose not to. All that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's very very true. So, you know, as we're as we're as we're moving through this new kind of paradigm shift, we we all have to recognize that we all hold the answers within us. So now we're all on different levels of awareness. But we all are still carriers of our own truth. Yeah. And giving our power away, I used to teach a class a long time ago. It's called self-empowerment, by the way. Awesome. And it, it really was a, a, a really very clear, concise thing. I had a lady that, I, I did a class, and I had a lady uh, that when we got all done, it's like it was a couple-hour workshop, and uh, I got all done teaching this, and um, she came up to me and she said, you know, I, I really did not enjoy this workshop. Of course, I was a whore, and I said, oh, my God, why? I mean, I said, D -d 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 you know, what was it about it you didn't like? <clears throat> and she said, well, um, because, you know, you're trying to make people responsible, and I'm going to tell you, and this, this is their words to me. Uh -huh. She said, that pisses me off because I want somebody else to do it for me. Ooh. Ooh. you got to love honesty, though. And I went, wow. And I looked at her, and I smiled at her, and I looked at her, and I said, then obviously this wasn't the class for you. Yeah, no kidding. You know, you And, and you know, I wasn't, point. But, but I will tell you, had that have been another time space for me, I may have reacted entirely different, which would have been to shrink and to, you know, fall all over myself, or the opposite would have been to get Explode. very... Yeah, to get very pissed off at mm. whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, so either one or the other, and instead this middle-of-the-road thing came out, which really honestly surprised me, yeah. and I just went, okay, note to self, that worked. It's just like Anaheim, California, a bunch of really pissed off, violence-prone people taking a middle path, and they don't even know why. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to all the emotional clearing that, you know, is required through all of this paradigm shifting stuff. I have a, a funny little way of describing it. I call it paradigm shitting because it's a lot like you've taken the emotional fiber con laxatives and, you know. <laughs> TMI now. There you go. Hey, <laughs> again. Hey, you got to, got to, got to integrate polarity and be politically in incorrect. I mean, there's no yeah. good nor bad. There just is. Let's, merge them together and have a party. There you go. There you go. There you go. Love it, love it, love it. Truly do. Really. I have to give you some crap about something every once in a while, you know. Oh, I wish you'd give me more if you talk more often. <laughs> you know, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really surprised because it's like, you know, through, through the first, especially through the first part of this show, I mean, it's like, uh, you had to have been mystified. Like, oh my God, Dave's actually capable of shutting up? When did this happen? And then when I started getting more talkative, I'm surprised that, you know, I didn't hear, like, Dave, yes, Rebecca, shut up. <laughs> no, man, that, 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 no, not even, not even, no. Yeah. Oh, man, you know, I was really missing the whole, all those lovely moments when you would tell me to shut up, because sometimes I desperately need it. I would start to get, well, you know, well, and I was getting a little nostalgic there. You know, well, let me share something with you. Just This is on record now, right? This is public record now, right? If I feel that you are overstepping your, your rants, or if I feel that they're asking me to tell you to shut up, I have no problem with doing that. Good for you. <laughs> Because sometimes I need someone to just come up and, and, and you know, Kat, Katerina does this for me, too, and I love her. She's a good friend. A good friend knows when to walk up to me and say, Dave, shut up. <laughs> I, love, right. I love you, Dave, but please shut up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. And a true friend, you know, let's talk about friends for a minute. Um, let's do you know, A friend is really somebody who's not just going to stand beside you and tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that's going to be your toughest critic as right. well as, as, as your best friend at the same time. They're going to be both the alpha and omega. They're going to be both your left and your right. They're going to be the balancing feature um, for you if they are a true friend. They're not going to be afraid to say, look, you are getting a little big for your britches there, girlfriend, <laughs> right? They're not going to be afraid to say that to you. And then on the other other token, they're also not going to say, look, you need to get up out of your funk and realize that you're important. 
they're also going to do that as well when you need that. And you're going to do the same thing for your friends. You're going to do that back. That's what we're here for. This is how we help each other. We help each other not by saying, you know, Dave, everything you do is absolutely perfect. Well, if it was absolutely perfect, then what would you need to work on, Dave? <laughs> what, what would you need to look forward to? You've already reached your state of perfection. What are you doing here? But don't you see I'm perfectly imperfect? <laughs> you, you see the point. You see the point. Yep. If, if you have somebody that, if, if, you know, Dave, if you told me, you know, I, I, think, I think you need to go buy a new pair of shoes, and I went out and bought a new pair of shoes, and you might tell me, you know, I think you need to go and buy us dinner, and I'd go out and buy you dinner. If, and if I was constantly just doing that because you said so, <clears throat> because I wanted to create happiness, what I thought was happiness for you, I'm in effect absolutely doing the opposite because somewhere you are looking for somebody to tell you no mm -hmm. because sometimes as humans can't do the work on our own so we set up scenarios so that we create the circumstances so that somebody else can put us in check yeah. because we won't do it for ourselves and sometimes it's also to where when they tell us no we say you know what no to your no, I'm going to do it anyway, because what people don't realize is no one's going to give you responsibility. Especially younger people, they're like, oh, well, when I'm old enough, I'll be given responsibility. No, you won't. If you expect to be given responsibility, then your parents, your friends, your family, your coworkers, everybody will unintentionally and unknowingly be controlling you and walking all over you for the rest of your life because they have detachment issues just as much as anybody else does. You've got to stand up and take responsibility and go, you know what? I love you, but I'm sovereign. That's right. And make, you know, and each choice you make, know that if the, if, if the choice doesn't work out to the best of your hopes, dreams, wishes, intentions, then you make a different choice. When you got lemons, make lemonade. Sometimes it's just to shift your perspective. I like to I like to tell people, you know, if one day you woke up and on your front lawn there was this huge, huge, huge mountain of horse poop, you'd probably be going, oh, woe is me. Who put this there? And, oh, it's going to be such a mess to clean up, and I'm such a victim. But I say, you know what, that's not what I would do. I'd be getting on the phone to farmers saying, you know what, there's got to be about 10 mil worth of fertilizer here. <laughs> you want to come and pick it up. <laughs> exactly. Opportunity, not burden. That's because, right. you know, nobody ever has a lack. What they actually have is an abundance of lack, because you can't lack anything. You can only have abundance of things. So if you have lack, and you have struggle, and you have birth, you have an abundance of it. Because what you put energy into grows. That's very true. What you, and you love what you put your attention to. That's exactly right. You love what you what you put your focus on and your Some intention into. Some love giving themselves shit. Let me tell you. <laughs> and I don't I don't mean the manure kind. I mean they're so hard on themselves. I said to a friend the other day who's been realizing to to make things easier on themselves in the universe, the universe reflecting that they've been learning their lessons easier. I said congratulations. You finally allowed the universe to bitch slap you with a pillow instead of the metal rod. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that person has been an awesome teacher for me, too. All my friends have. I mean, I've taught Jay Larson a lot, and he's taught me a lot. And I've taught Katerina a lot, and she's taught me a lot. And you've taught me a lot, and I've taught you a lot. Although I must say, Katerina is my absolute best friend and most perfect mirror. My God, we love each other to death. We kiss each other off like crazy. We we talk civil. We fight. We do everything. And then at the end of all of it, what always happens is we're laughing our asses off at ourselves, at each other, and saying how much we appreciate each other. It's just it's one of those things. It's an awesome type of person. Rock on, brother. Okay. Thank you, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> careful. Very, very careful. Hey, you know I had to do it. <laughs> Just, you, you put an open shot in. I, you know me. Hey, yeah. what, what, what you resist persists. I just couldn't resist. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I'll remember that. 
I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah, when it's my turn for you to kick me in my butt, yeah, as a little, well, babe, I was only taking your advice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Jay, shut up. You talk too much. What have you got to say about all this? <laughs> Uh, I was re curious, Rebecca. I was, I was um, spent most of my younger life in uh, Michigan as well, about 15 miles uh, south of where uh, Stewart lives. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's the area I grew up in. I, I moved to Florida to be here to be a Oh my God! You guys rode the same brontosaurus to grade school. What a coincidence! The same <laughs> coincidence. It was not. You just think <laughs> think it was. Um, anyway, and, and, and um, you know, Jay, I, I, actually, you're breaking up a little bit again. So breaking maybe up gonna, is not so hard to do. Yeah. So maybe <laughs> you could kind of repeat the the last part of what you were talking about. Uh, I said I uh, grew up about. 15 miles south of where Stewart lives now. All right. You you, you said you were from Michigan as well uh, originally. Yeah, I was actually, you know, in a, in a little town called Lake Fenton is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, and just a little small community. Uh, when I was growing up, it's now a huge community, but when I was growing up, it was a little Wait, small community. I can't hear you again. So you're still breaking up bad. Wow, really breaking up bad. The universe says no. Yeah. You're breaking up horrible, Jay. We're not even I'm not able to hear anything at all that you're saying, sweetie. I can hear that he's talking, but it's like Yeah. It's like that. And I, yeah. Oh, then I go to my mic and try to adjust Okay, I heard he saying that he was going to mute his mic and try to adjust, and then that's then he went off air again. So, oh, I'm sorry, Jay. It, it's so frustrating to have, um, you know, communication issues. It really is, especially when you're on a communication kind of venue. <laughs> well, you know, look at it this way. The universe is just being a really good friend and telling Jay to shut up. Oh, <laughs> think so. Oh. But the universe oh. is a good friend. It doesn't judge. You know, I'm not <laughs> there, but I, I'm not sure that that's what the universe is saying, dear. I'm just I, 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 would, I would disagree with that. I would disagree with that, too. I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Let, you know, let's, let's talk about what's going on right now. Um, we just had a huge CME. Every planet that we had, uh, what, about last two weeks, uh, w was in retrograde. Uh, talk about brain leakage across the globe. It was absolutely phenomenal to watch uh, what happened with people with all these planets in uh, in these retrograde positions as well as, you know, whatever is happening with this tilt. People still are not, um, uh, quote, unquote, uh, functioning at their, their prime, uh, optimum, rather, um, space of being. Um, then we have uh, we had those eclipses, and then we had the the, the solstice, and then uh, we've got the CMEs, the, the all of the planets um, in retrograde, or, or a majority of the planets in retrograde, and it's just been hugely uh, transformative. It's been uprooting. Uh, it has been um, just hugely impactful on everybody, even people that don't talk about energy or vibration, <clears throat> resonance or frequency, are now using those terms. I've noticed that. Everyday dialogue because whether you're, and I love this statement, I love this statement, I wish I was, I coined it, but I did not. Um, the, the shift, the transition, uh, in the fr frequency and the vibration changes are going on whether you're aware of it or not. Yeah. So I prefer the awareness aspect of it because uh, other people that aren't as aware, they still feel it. It's still going on. They just don't identify it. You see, they're, yeah. they're not, not understanding 
what it is, so maybe they don't feel well, or maybe you know they'll run to the doctor thinking they've got an equilibrium equilibrium <clears throat> problem. Or Rebecca, uh, yes, there's about, only about 15 minutes left. I have a question because I know there's going to be people listening to this that are going to want to know this. Um, obviously, there's been pictures, video, all sorts of evidences floating around. Nibiru's been playing peekaboo between the chemtrails. So, what is your take on Nibiru, Planet X, whatever you want to call it? Okay. Um, the information that I got a few years back um, was that that Nibiru was going to show up one more time, and it would be the last time it would ever visit in this solar system again, um, and this would be its last its last visit. Mm -hmm. So as I'm as the you know this Nibiru thing ebbs and flows, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's here, it's not here, it's here, it's not here, it's this, no, it's not. Um, I've always felt that it wasn't going to be um, what they've shown me is that it's not going to react or um, operate with the same laws of physics, so to speak, as what you would find in a normal solar system, in this solar system where it follows a specific pattern, orbit, uh, et cetera, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's some intelligence behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel like that, that there has been some recent changes to the energetics of this planet X, Nibiru, whatever you wish to call it. And when I say recent changes, it could have been thousands of years ago, but it's recent in as much as what we remember it to be. Mm -hmm. There's there's the key there, remember it to be, whether that's a conscious or unconscious awareness. <coughs> uh, my feeling is, is that Nibiru is out there. Um, whether it's playing peekaboo or not, that doesn't sound so far-fetched to me based on what was shown to me years ago, a few years back. Matter of fact, back in 2007, 2008 is when this information came in. And that it was going to um, be moving around in our solar system, which I believe it has. I what do you think its intention is? What, what, what would you say? That's I, I don't know. I wish, and, and you know, here's where I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into trouble with this. And when I say trouble with this, I don't mean like somebody's going to punish. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, is how I view things is not how people understand it when I relate it. So yeah. that's why I said when I get, I don't want to get into trouble with what it is I'm seeing. So I'm going to share this much, though. I'm not trying to be evasive here. Oh, I understand. But what I'm trying to do is to not uh, implant something that is is not really happening because that's how people are taking it. And I, I don't want to be out of context here. I don't want this misconstrued. Yeah. People have a real fear mechanism. Yeah, you know, yeah. The whole Nibiru thing. So I'll put the disclaimer in front of it then that you are not making this as an absolute and there is risk of context misunderstandings because we're all unique individuals. So all listeners should not take this in any way as any sort of sect or non-sect, literal or non-literal, it's just a perspective, it's metaphor, it's language, so don't lock onto it. This is just how Rebecca feels. Take it away. <laughs> well, that was quite a disclaimer. Okay. So, years ago I had this, this vision, this, and I followed it. I followed this vision. There's been a recent change, and let me, let me share with you what I've seen. What I've seen is a change of color in the planet. Um, it's, it's changed hues. That's significant when you're viewing something. Mm -hmm. Because when when something changes its color, that means that it's changed its composition, its intent, its intelligence, its energetic, it's changed. It's morphed into something else. It is no longer how it was. So that's significant when I see this color change. What did it change to? What color? Do you know? It's brown. Um, it's a brown color. Now, understand that that may not be a literal translation, that brown is a metaphor in my vision for what does that mean. Does that mean that there's a lack of energy, that it's cloaking itself because it's trying to become invisible? Does that mean that it's near death because there is no uh, color uh, emanating from it besides this kind of like milk chocolate brown that it seems to be, right? Uh-huh. So there's there's a lot of things it could mean. 
Yeah. I can't cubbyhole it. I'm not up close and personal. I haven't really looked at this again, by the way, in a very long time. I haven't gotten up there yeah. personal to the Nibiru thing. And I know it over the last three or four weeks it's really come up in, in a lot of cop topics. Yeah. But no one has asked me to look at it until just now. But I can tell you that I do believe, in, in my opinion, just in my opinion, I believe that Nibiru is alive and well. However, it's, um, I, um, it's intent, it's, its original purpose, its original point, it's whatever it was originated for has changed and shifted. Something has happened. Um, I believe that it has been taken down a couple of levels, whatever the hell that means, uh, just based on this color hue change thing that went on. Energetic, yeah. Energetically, to, to me, the, the energetic intuition I get off of it is that it's kind of... Good, bad, and everything in between. Babylon 5 is rolling in, basically. You ever watch the show? Oh, my gosh, yes. Are you kidding? You're talking to Love me. that thing. Love that show. But remember, on Babylon 5, they had the good, the bad, and the ugly, and everything in between. And every, everybody got along on the station peacefully. That was the whole point of it. And you ever notice that it was in orbit of a, of a planet that is very archetypal of Nibiru and Babylon and the Babylonians and 5, 5D going into the fifth world, all sorts light and dark and integration, all sorts of um, esoteric symbolism in that movie or a series. But needless to say, that's why it's important for you know, what vibration you're at, your intentions, and what timeline you're going to throw yourself down. Because in my opinion, all the people that are like, oh, doom and gloom and alien invasion, and the aliens are going to come eat us, and there's going to be cataclysm, and da-da-da. If you throw yourselves down that sort of alignment, hey, there's more than one Earth, and this is Babylon 5 rolling in, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you're going to get that if you're, if you're going in that direction. And if you're taking a more middle path, and you'll kind of get a hybrid of the good and the bad. And if you're taking the higher path, it'll be the you know, great light show and moving into the better state. But, you know, the Mayans outlined this already, and the Mayans are kind of ticked off. Well, what's left of the culture that they outline three paths, and the world is so focused on the negative path. Like, what, are you guys crazy? We're trying to tell you that you have your choice of three paths and you're choosing the worst one? Are you nuts? <laughs> right, right. Well, it's just recently come to light that they've uh, found another extension of the 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 tablets that they said there was there was no others and <clears throat> nice. you know it's like whatever sure and the uh -huh. world is not going to end in 2012 it's not Armageddon that's that's the height and um, anyway getting back to the whole Tiburu thing yeah I, I I and again because of this huge trans transformation that's taking place the transitions the transformations the, all these energetics are are meeting up uh, you know we we still got this the the big thing too is is also the Venus in transit right now. Yeah. That that that's huge. People just don't realize what that portends. That's a huge positive Venus uh, transiting um, and and being where it's at in our skies in our solar system. And, and then it aligns with the then it aligns with the Pleiades and we Yeah. <laughs> and and then we've got this whole thing coming in, you know, around the December twenty first, which is the galactic center thing. Mm -hmm. I mean we have got timeline converging on top of timeline converging on top of timeline. We have got potential after potential after potential showing up. And a partridge up. in a pit. That's right. That's right. So Nibiru for some is going to be one thing, and Nibiru for another is going to be others, and for some Nibiru doesn't even exist. That's how it's going to be. Nice. You know, and, and, and you know, I've had a hard time, by the way, wrapping my mind around those concepts. I really have. I'm like, how can that be? We're all new. We're we're, we're all ex we're, and it becomes noticeable when you can put an apple and a pear and a banana down on a table, and and bring people in and just ask them, what do you see? And some people won't even notice the apple, the pear, and the banana. They will notice the table. Very interesting. You just, it's just interesting. Or somebody will uh, will focus on the banana and not even realize that there was an apple and a pear there. It's a oh, matter that was even sitting on a yeah. table. As yeah. a, ma a matter of fact, it's interesting what you say that, you know, you can't um, wrap your mind around it. I can wrap my mind around the con concepts so 
florifically that I astound myself that I can because not too long in the distant, not not too distant past, really, I was one of those people locked into, oh, I'm never going to be smart enough for insert list here. I'm never going to be good enough for insert list here. I'm never going to be skilled enough for insert list here. Oh, I can never know this. I can never understand that. I can't do this. I can never do that. I'm not capable of this or skilled enough to do that. I've improved myself wrong, left, right, up, and down, and blow in my own freaking mind. And it's like Twilight Zone. We're all living a sci-fi movie, we just need to face it. <laughs> truly is. You don't need to turn on sci-fi anymore. That's probably the reason why they got rid of the shows is because our life is going to, uh, our life is going to, it is, is sci-fi. It really is. We are paranormal. We are metaphysical. Oh. We are spiritual. We are moving into a higher vibration and frequency. Um, our DNA is being, uh, you know, uh, upped. It's being upgraded. Every every layer of your own personal onion that you can peel off uh, opens up more of your DNA, yeah. uh, opens up more awareness, abilities, strengths, uh, capabilities. Only so, seven more minutes. Just Jay wants me to let you know that. Only okay. seven more minutes until the show comes to a close automatically. Okay. Is, does he have a question that he would like to ask me? I mean, maybe he can type it in there or um, something. I know he yeah. had one that he wanted to ask. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure he can type it if he has it. I just wanted to let you know that we've only got seven minutes left. Moving in on six, so I guess it's traditional for a show. Um, final thoughts, and he doesn't have any questions. Final thoughts. Um, is is Sonic in here? Is anybody else in here other than me and Jay? Or do you have any final thoughts, Rebecca? Or this is you know. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, here's what I would love to share with people. You know, my journey. Um, you know, didn't start with the radio show. We, you brought me on to talk about a radio show. My, my journey started at birth. And prior to that, we're all eternal beings. If you want to get, you know, I mean, my gosh, how many millions of years are we all? I don't know, <laughs> right? Uh, we've all seen a lot, felt a lot. We all know things. We must give ourselves permission to recall that and to own that portion of it that strengthens us and to not focus on that which weakens us. We must learn to come together as a race and not create a collective conscious, but a unified one. Very different. Yeah. Very, very extremely. different. They come from whole different frequencies and vibrations. We need to step up past the collective. The collective is our memory banks. It's all the crap that's happened, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. And what we have to do now is we have to move beyond that because there's a ton of programming. And so most all of that is, is programming. We have to move beyond that to the next step, which is the yeah. unified consciousness. Yeah. And recognize we really are all in this together. Yeah, it's, it's, whether yeah. we stay in it together is not the point. True. We're all in this together. We can all experience this together. True. We can all bring a new level of being to those who are of Earth. Absolutely. And I mean, it's just... It, the, the the collective, you can think of it as the Borg or fascism and being uni, a unified, you know, collective as opposed to a fascist collective. It's like we're sovereign, but sovereigns can co-create with sovereigns. It's almost like the cells of the body. You don't see the heart going along with the with, with the, excuse me, the heart going to war with the lungs, and you don't see the kidneys having civil war and you know, sovereign yet working together as equals. Nobody's free will is disrespected, but we're all able to align and co-create and do all this awesome stuff, and that's what we're moving into. Yeah, and truly, we we have some huge potentials for the rest of the year. So I would tell people, uh, you know, definitely clear out your junk. You know, I do those those wonderful um, timeline workshops. Uh, I do them once a month. It's a very limited group. I only allow six in a group at a time, and I only do them once a month. So it's very, very limited seating. Yeah. Um, I also do them personally. But for those who would like to experience one of those uh, to get you on the path, I can tell you irrevocably, without fail, that everyone that has taken that workshop has transitioned through uh, something uh, huge in, in just a matter of sometimes minutes to hours. I've taken a uh, workshop of yours too before, Rebecca. You know that. Yeah. And ever since the ever since the the Elohim answered a question for me, it's like my my life spiraled like apart and then together and then apart and then together, and it all had to do with the answer to that question. And I was like, holy crap! 
<laughs> very powerful stuff, man. I'm telling you, they're they're very powerful. They really are. Three so I, I invite I invite people to to definitely check that out. I also want to let people know too. I do private sessions. I know, I'm I'm open. I have opened up for private um, for new clients until the 17th of August. So I had a 30 day window. Um, and I do this once, sometimes twice a year, usually once a year, uh, where it's a very reduced rate. You can get a reading, you can get a timeline regression, you can get a little bit of both, um, but you have an ability to chat with the Elohim during one of these sessions. All of that stuff is on my website, that's journeyswithrebecca.com. I want to let people know Tuesday nights, I'm on from 9 to 11 p.m. Central Time. Wednesday nights, I have two different shows. I have one from 6 to 7, which is Journeys with Rebecca. And then, again, 7 to 9 p.m., which is Real Women Stepping Up. And those are all Central Time. And um, that's on Thursday evenings. And those are both at freedomslips.com and wolfspiritradio.com. And then Fridays from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time, you can find me at freedomslips.com. So I have Tuesday nights at Wolf Spirit. Friday nights at Freedom Slips, and Thursday nights is with both of them on simulcast with both of those stations. So I think that's probably a good way of kind of putting that all together for people. Awesome, awesome. Well, we are in the last minute, and I just wanted to thank you very much for coming on. The fact that you're on this day, this time, everything has more synchronicities than can be mentioned in my life and Jay's and all over the place. And I really want to thank you very much for coming on and it's been an absolute pleasure to be on with you and I think I speak for all of us, me, Jay, etc. when I say we love you and uh, appreciate you and think you're awesome and everybody needs to check out Journeys with Rebecca to at least give it a try. You know? I love you and I thank you both, Jay and uh, yourself and all of those that were listening and hope they tune in and they can always email me mailbag at journeys with Rebecca dot com. Um, I love emails. I love your <laughs> hellos from people. Yeah. Let's think, do this again before the classic alignment, oh, shall we? Let's yes, please, let's do. You just make I a love the energy. It feel it feels like a lightning bolt is shooting up my backside in a good way. <laughs> Wonderful. That's good. That's awesome. It rocks. And everybody out there rocks. Them. You rock, Rebecca. You're oh. awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And really, blessings. And, you know, without you guys, I, there would be no reason for me to be here. Thank you. 20 seconds. So this is the end of Journey yeah. with Type 1 Radio. One radio. Experiencing the known and the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Hasta la vista. Bye-bye, everybody. Well, when you said be creative, be creative, what were you thinking I was going to do? <laughs> it's a really hard challenge. <laughs> If you shit in a bucket, you're going to have a bucket of shit. So if you don't want a bucket of shit, then don't shit in the bucket. And if you shit in the bucket anyway, stop blaming the bucket. Bucket, 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 bucket. Only state of being at her, circumstances both at her. Only state of being at her, circumstances both at her. Only state of being at her, circumstances both at her. Only state of being at her. Circumstances both at her. Only state of being at her, circumstances both at her. Only state of being at her. All right, let's say, let us continue. With this transmission, in the following way, 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 Again, I remind you, this is where you get caught in your own paradoxical trap. Even though it is true that what you put out is what you get back and that by being in a certain state of being that will determine what the circumstances around you are the first stage of that the first manifestation of that will be usually especially in your world of space and time usually the first reflection will look the same as it used to because this gives you an opportunity to reinforce the state of being by responding to the circumstances that look the same differently than you did before and that is where you then allow the circumstances to truly reflect
reflect that you have changed and demonstrate that you truly have changed by responding to the circumstances differently even if they look the same as they used to. That's how it works. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. does not expect you to have to struggle. It does not expect you to have to, in any way, shape, or form, suffer. Circumstances don't matter. Only they appear to matter. Circumstances don't matter. as a mantra if you wish, if it works for you. Here it is. Are you paying attention? The secret to the secret to the secret. Passionate about being passionate, 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 passionate. Now that's paradigm shifting. You want to know what?